Assalamualaikum sahabat Al-Kahfi Semoga Anda sehat selalu dan mendapatkan rahmat serta petunjuk dari Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Menyikapi sistem pendidikan khususnya di Indonesia saat ini sudah sangat memprihatinkan Setelah puluhan tahun sejak Indonesia yang merdeka Dari segi konten pendidikan sudah terindikasi kental dengan nuansa sekularisme Hal ini dapat dilihat dari kurikulum yang ada Peran agama sangat diminimalisasi hingga bahkan dipisahkan dari sistem pendidikan Kini semakin nampak arah kebijakan pendidikan di Indonesia semakin sekuler dan semakin liberal Menteri Pendidikan Kebudayaan Riset dan Teknologi saat ini Nadiem Makarim telah berkali-kali membuat kebijakan yang bertentangan terutama dengan norma agama Kebijakan terakhir yang saat ini kembali membuat heboh adalah mengenai Peraturan Menteri Pendidikan Kebudayaan Riset dan Teknologi Nomor 30 Tahun 2021 yang disahkan bulan September 2021 lalu dalam pasal 5 ayat 2 terdapat sekira tujuh frasa yang berbunyi tanpa persetujuan korban yang secara hukum jika ditafsirkan mengandung makna boleh atau sah jika dengan persetujuan korban Oleh karena itu, sejumlah kalangan menilai bahwa isi dari Permen Dikbud Distek ini disinyalir mengandung muatan legalisasi perzinahan di kalangan kampus secara tidak langsung. Selain itu juga membuka celah untuk praktek LGBT. Nah, Bukan kali ini saja, sebelumnya Mas Menteri juga telah mengeluarkan sejumlah kebijakan kontroversial seperti Peta Jalan Pendidikan Nasional 2020-2035 yang akhirnya ditarik untuk direvisi karena tidak memasukkan frasa agama. Kemudian SKB 3 Menteri mengenai seragam siswa yang akhirnya juga dibatalkan oleh MA dan Kamus Sejarah Indonesia yang banyak informasinya tidak akurat bahkan tidak memasukkan tokoh-tokoh umat Islam yang berjasa bagi sejarah pembentukan negara Indonesia Merdeka dan justru banyak memasukkan tokoh-tokoh PKI dan akhirnya ditarik juga. Ini benar-benar harus menjadi bahan perhatian kita karena menyangkut masa depan generasi anak keturunan kita kelak akan seperti apa. Nah, bagaimana permasalahan pendidikan ini dilihat dari perspektif eskatologi Islam? Berkenaan dengan sistem pendidikan, ternyata tidak terlepas dari peran Dajjal yang telah melakukan berbagai upaya untuk menghancurkan generasi muda umat beragama melalui sistem pendidikan. Bagaimana sebenarnya sistem pendidikan dalam Islam yang diajarkan oleh Rasulullah SAW dan bagaimana peran Dajjal dalam merusak tatanan pendidikan secara global. Mari kita simak kajian yang disampaikan oleh Maulana Sheikh Imran Hussein berikut ini. Selamat menyimak. Uh, our topic is one of tremendous importance, knowledge, the system of education, and the job. And uh, tonight, we will look at the knowledge and the system of education in our civilization. Uh, particularly as it affects the child. <coughs> and the adolescent until he reaches to become the other, the process of learning. Uh, but tomorrow night, we would like to look at the house of knowledge in Islam, higher Islamic learning, uh, because uh, it is my opinion at the age of 80, I used to say 77 until I got a knock on my head, the Quran knocked me on my head and said to me, but Allah says that he gave you the moon. That you would count the years with the moon. So Imran, how come you using the sun? So I got the knock on my head. So I'm now 80 years of age by the moon. And uh, I have located uh, um, this conclusion that the world of Islamic scholarship, our ulama, our maulanas and uh, shuyukh and uh, muftis, ustaz, etc. While there is still so much sincerity and dedication in their ranks, they have not succeeded in responding to the challenges of this age in which we live. They don't even understand. 
they don't even understand the age in which we did far less to be able to respond to it. And this has been a, 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 a devastating state for us. It has led to our collapse of the civilization because our ulama have failed us in respect of the subject. To understand the reality which confronts us today and to go to the Quran to respond to that reality. Is there anyone here present who would differ with me that the most critically important issue facing the world of Islam today, anyway, more than that, the whole world is the subject of money. And money is not only the banking system, it is also the monetary system. People don't even know what I'm talking about. They don't even know what I'm talking about when I use the word the monetary system. <laughs> this is the most critically important subject of all facing this Ummah and be facing mankind today. And has the Darulum contributed even this much to the study of the subject and to responding to what is Pakistan's most critical moment today in its history? Nothing from the Darulum, nothing from the scholars of Islam, nothing at all. But it's worse than that. Because Allah has been kind to me. And I have been able to study the subject and from the Quran to be able not only to explain but also to offer guidance. Imagine my astonishment when I find that they will not only not accept what I'm teaching but also reject me and call me names and uh, shut the doors of the masjid on me. And so we are certainly in a very, very dangerous situation today. And no amount of boxing gloves, Deobandi, Brelvi, Sufi, Salafi, this, that boxing match is going to change our condition. No. And so tomorrow we will look at the house of knowledge in Islam which is producing our scholars. <laughs> and then on the, the day of Juma, I don't call it Friday, because you may not be aware of it, Friday is the day for the worship of a Scandinavian, a Scandinavian goddess named Fry. <laughs> yes, so uh, I, I prefer to use the name Yomul Juma, Juma Kadid. So on on uh, Juma, Yom Juma, uh, in Leicester, and I understand Leicester is less than one hour from Nottingham. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I will be speaking on uh, the Quran and uh, how to begin with the Quran to reconstruct the house of knowledge, a higher knowledge in Islam, and the subject is the Quran and the moon methodology for reciting the Quran, which is the first step to the second, which is the Quran and the stars methodology for study of the Quran. So let us begin with Allah's blessed name and uh, direct our attention to knowledge and the system of education in our civilization and what the Dajjal is doing, what is the danger which he presents to us. Our Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he said, teach the child from infancy until the age of seven. Teach the child with love. That is the teacher, to teach with love. And he said from age 7 until age 14, teach the child by disciplining the child, 
establishing firm habits in the child hmm? that will remain with the child all through his or her life. Like the most important one of all is to perform your salat regularly. The most important one of all is to recite the Quran every day. Eventually, at the age of 10, you will be reciting the whole Quran from cover to cover once a month. This is the second stage. And he said, after the child passes the age of 40, you cannot teach the child other by becoming, than by becoming a friend, by becoming a friend of the child. This is the psychology of education that has come from Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. If we are to teach with love from childhood until age seven, then the child has to grow up in the arms of love. The child has to grow up in a stable home where love will be shown. And so Allah gives us a social system of the relationship between the male and the female, which makes sense for the home to be a stable home, to be a happy home, and for the child to grow up in the arms of security and of happiness. If Allah has blessed me today, to have this profile around the world as a scholar of Islam. When I was born in a little island in the Caribbean, just off the coast of Venezuela, far, far, far removed from the world of Islam. If this has become possible in my life, it's because I started off in a happy home. I started off in a stable home with father and mother and children living together in a unit, a stable unit. I never had a part-time mother. Oh my gosh, Imran, now you're going down the wrong road. This is the road to trouble, huh? <laughs> But I don't care two peanuts. I don't care two peanuts for those who cannot stomach the truth. I'm not here to preach Islam to please them. Who do they think they are? It doesn't matter to me how many they may be. And it doesn't matter to me what are the consequences of my proclaiming the truth. If I cannot proclaim the truth, tell me so, and I leave your dictatorship, and I go somewhere else where there is freedom. The most important thing of all for me is freedom. So tell me, when I no longer have freedom, I pack my bags and leave. But so long as I have freedom, I must proclaim the truth. I never had a part-time mother. My mother was at home, full-time. And that meant a lot in the psychology of education of the child. It gives to the child a certain internal security <coughs> and the maintenance of an internal balance that is not disturbed. But when a child grows up in a broken home <laughs> and when <laughs> Christmas time comes, he goes to the supermarket to buy Christmas cards 
and he looks for one for mommy and her husband. And he looks for another one for daddy and his wife. Can you imagine the heart of that child? Christmas is coming. This is for them the greatest time of the year in this country. That child is growing up with a broken heart because that child came from a broken home. So if you want to damage a person, destroy him, destroy him as a child, and he'll grow up to be a gangster, he'll grow up to take drugs, he become violent using firearms and he'll enter into the world of promiscuity and the child is only 14 and she already has her first abortion. Uh, they say, no, 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 no. You can't get married until you're 18. That's haram. But it's okay to have your first abortion at 14. And then the second abortion at 15. This is the destruction of the human being. And so our first, first uh, 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 argument for proper education and therefore for the construction of the house of knowledge is to try to ensure that the child grows up with love. And love means love in a home, a family. The, the one who created every human being and who created the water that we drink and who created the food that we eat and who created the air that we breathe and who gives us the light of the day and the darkness of the night, this is the one who says, that he created the male and the female the way he created the night and the day. He says so in the Quran. And so night and day are like male and female. They complement each other. They're two halves that come together to make a whole. And uh, the day has its functions to perform. Allah says, and I gave you the day so you can work and toil. And I gave you the night for a different purpose. That you can have rest in the night. So they are functionally different. Similarly, the man and the woman, the male and the female are functionally different. And it's when father and mother fulfill their functions as male and female, as father and mother, that you can have a stable home and therefore a stable society. But when you come with this greatest <coughs> achievement of modern Western civilization, which uh, informs me, Imran, this is the greatest civilization it has ever been the good fortune of mankind to witness. And uh, this civilization has come to replace all that came before it. Every civilization that came before this civilization is now the language that Toynbee used in his book, Civilization and Triad. He said, moribund <laughs> and obsolete. He says, they have all been relegated to the museums of history, including Islamic civilization. Sounds like arrogance to me. And the greatest achievement of this civilization, and they cannot stop me from saying it, no, is for a man to marry another man and get a marriage certificate. But is Western civilization's greatest achievement? 
But even a fool would understand that you are disrupting the complementary roles of the male and the female. The, the, the family unit is being destroyed. The home is no longer going to be the home as Allah has arranged. And so the child who grows up in that broken home and the child who grows up in this bogus home is going to be a child who eventually will end up in a mental asylum. Disoriented. And so we begin the process of education by returning to the home that Allah has ordained and uh, returning to the marital relationship that Allah has ordained. He gave to the father certain functional roles and I'm not allowed to talk about it now. And he gave to the mother certain functional roles and the modern feminist woman comes with a sword in her. Stop it, don't talk about it. And our response is, get lost, who are you? We are scholars of Islam, we've come to peace. Who are you to stop us? It doesn't matter to me if you're a Pakistani woman, you know, the modernized one. And uh, Allah gave us marriage, a system of marriage, which gives you a stable home. And when a, uh, when a, uh, <coughs> A girl reached the age of puberty. Puberty. Now she can become pregnant. Only now does she qualify to be married, not before. To marry a girl who has not reached the age of puberty, you should be sent on a one-way ticket to Mars. Huh? Do you want to marry a girl who is only six years of age? Send them on a one-way ticket to Mars. But in addition to that, Allah speaks about rushd, a certain measure of maturity, not a PhD from MIT. And when once the girl has this age, she has reached the age of puberty, and she has some measure of maturity, so she can handle the home, the finances of the home. She, she's now, according to Allah's wisdom, she's ready for marriage. But today's world says we are more learned and intelligent than the Lord God himself. That's the brainwashing that we have to live with today. And so if you accept that, no, 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 she must reach the age of 18 before she can be married. You're wasting your time listening to me. We reject that. But when uh, Dajjal sends the order, every single government in the whole world, including the world of Islam, have to enact legislation. I don't know if Pakistan did it. Prohibiting marriage before she reaches the age of 18. What happens when girls get married early? We have early marriage. This has always been in all civilizations in history until the child took over the world. Answer, you had more stable families. The marriages lasted. And you had bigger families. And people lived a happier life. And in this age of progress, yes, this the best age ever, with the, West, the best civilization it has ever been the good fortune of mankind to witness. Nearly every marriage is ending up in divorce. They meet each other and they pledge eternal love. And eternity lasts for six weeks. Six months. And then it's his lawyer and her lawyer taking over. So is this progress? If we want to bring back education and reconstruction of the house of knowledge, we have to restore 
the stable home. And to restore the stable home, we've got to go back to the relationship between the male and female. And I don't have the time today to expand on this subject, but this is under attack around the world today. The relationship between the male and female in society and the role of women in society. The role of women in society. And as a consequence of this modernist thinking, the jazz modern feminist revolution, we are now in this state of debacle. When the child is in that early stage, up to the age of seven, the most important thing to be done in the process of education is to build the memory. If you build a vast memory bank, if I may be allowed to use that term, then that child can eventually emerge with an amazing versatility. He would not only become a medical doctor, he might also have uh, uh, engineering, he could have philosophy, he could have all these other subjects. What is the, the sky is the limit when you build the memory bank. And so we began education in Islam by trying intelligently so, sensibly so, to build the memory bank of the child, that the child would memorize and memorize and memorize. If the child is memorizing poetry, Urdu poetry, well still it has some benefit. But if the child is memorizing the Quran, MashaAllah. And so this is what we did at that age, building the memory bank. And along comes the Jal, 